about Mike Brown, which we're going to do with our next guest, the one and only. He's so kind to give me part of his time. He's an award-winning author. He covers the Warriors and pretty much everything. He says he writes bars for The Athletic. I've never seen a writer put write bars. That's usually for rappers, but I love it. He does write bars for The Athletic. He's on Twitter, at Thompson Scribe. He's Oakland's own author of Golden, by the way. Um, well, ha- let me finish it. He's author of Golden, KD, and Dynasty Books. So go check all those out. Um, by the way, Marcus, I saw you in that press conference say something along the lines of, wouldn't you say it was uh, maybe even Golden? You got to laugh out of Steph for that. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> How you think that thing was a bestseller? <laughs> you, you did that all the time, huh? You just like worked that word in there. You know what I'm saying? That's a, a good promo, man. I'm from I'm from the hood, so <laughs> we know how to we know how to sell stuff out the trunk. Yeah, I hear you. That's a that's a hustle for sure. Uh, before we get into other stuff, um, I hopefully I didn't interrupt. Hopefully you finished it. But um, you were writing about um, the re-signing of Kevon Looney. Now, from what I understood going into the off season, while they wanted to keep a lot of guys, Gary Payton the second, Otto Porter uh, Otto Porter Jr. the second um, or the third. Uh, from what I heard, there was no way they were going to let Kevon Looney go. Is that is, is that the proper understanding? Yeah, but before I answer that, I'm a, I'm a, I, we got to pause and talk about the fact that you just said Otto Porter Jr. the third. <laughs> what was I supposed to say? Sorry, I've been I've been throwing names around all day today. You're gonna bust I mean, me all out. These, huh? All these all these suffixes get you. I understand GP two and all that, but you know. You can't be the junior and the better, but I never heard that, so that's really funny. I like that. Uh, now, like, you know, well, really, it's all about James Wiseman. That's what it's really about. Like, James Wiseman, number two pick for 2020. He didn't play all year. He's had this uh, meniscus injury that kept him out way longer than anybody thought. And they're banking on him becoming the center. But until he can prove he's a center, it's Kevon Looney's job. And he was great in the playoffs. They just can't afford to lose him because if Wiseman's still not ready or he's not very good yet, then they have nothing. So in that sense, Looney becomes the most valuable player. I thought GP2 probably should have been the priority, but considering the center situation, they just they could not let Kevon Looney go because otherwise they're starting center with some dude off the scrap heap for the minimum. And that, 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 but you can't win a championship if they go to that. So, Lou was always getting in. I, I think he wanted a little bit more money than what he got. But, you know, he's back to the bay where he belongs anyway. Yeah, I was going to ask you, Marcus, with all this money that you've seen getting thrown around, 50 million, 40 million, 30 million, 20, were, were you shocked that Kavon could only get eight a year over three? Not really, man. You got to get buckets. <laughs> you got to get buckets or you got to be yeah. an athlete. Or you got to be like legit seven feet. Like Looney is six nine, right? He put on some weight, but he's really a forward, you know. When he came out of high school, they was calling him the next KD. So he's not a true center. So he's not like seven foot. He's not a rim protector. He doesn't block a lot of shots. And you got to get buckets. You want to you want to get money in free agency? You got to get buckets. You got to be actual seven feet rim protector. You know what I'm saying? Or you got to be a super athlete. But but the OG. Rush tail dudes to do all the dirty work. It's hard. It's hard to get money on the, on the on the free agent market like that. Yeah, I wonder what his other uh, offers were. Marcus Thompson, the second. See, look, you got me over there messing style. I almost called you Marcus Thompson Jr. the third or whatever. I'm just saying, <laughs> pick one. That's it. It's whatever it is, pick one. <laughs> Marcus Thompson, the second, here on Sacktown Sports, 1140. Zachariah filling in for Cattles and Rami. Well, you're on air right now in Sacramento, Marcus. And as you know, Mike Brown signed it to, up to be the head coach. His third go round. he was with uh, Cleveland, then he was with L.A. What should Sacramento expect based on do you think he learned a lot being the assistant with you know around all this success with Golden State and you think he'll be able to bring that up to Sacramento because we already know Luke Walton tried and didn't necessarily succeed I mean yeah it's tough not to learn but I do think it's a big difference to learn while you're coaching Steph Curry right like some of the lessons that you learn when it's Clay Thompson or Draymond Green they probably won't super but they won't work as well if it ain't Seth Curry and Draymond Green. But, but like, what Sack can expect is the coach who's, like, going to coach up the defense, right? Like, the days of being a fizz, not getting after it, 
like that's just not how Mike Brown rolls. Like he's going to coach a defense. So if you, if there's a if there's a like a, a minute a jam, long jam and you got to try to figure out well, who's going to get the minutes, Mike Brown's going to go with the guy who plays defense. <laughs> right? That's just how he thinks he was a defensive coordinator. He was the reason they were elite. He had them dudes going back and forth, like in the game between zone and man and matchup and box and one. So you can expect that he's going to go in on defense and everybody's going to be held accountable, and especially the guards. That's a big deal with him. The other thing is, too, like Mike Brown's one of them cats who, if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? He, you know, he's going to, I do think he's going to bring the ball movement and motion that he learned with Steve Kerr. Like, I, th- I do think he's going to incorporate that. Like, it's, it's important to get everybody involved. All of that stuff, that's the type of stuff you learn from Steve Kerr. Keeping guys live who might be the 14th man or roster, giving them minutes sometimes so they can feel a part of it. He'll bring all that. But Mike Brown is, is also the kind of dude that's like, listen, if they ain't stopping to pick a row, we're going to run it every time. Uh, so if somebody has a matchup, you can, you can expect them to exploit that. But most of all, I think it's going to be defense. That's where you're going to really know Mike Brown is there because the defense is going to be a priority. Yeah, and they certainly need it. I mean, they need more help on the defensive end than they do on the offensive end. All right, I'm assuming you went to the parade, yeah? Oh, yeah, I was in the building. Oh, okay. All right, let's, let's, let's end this on a fun note. First of all, Clay Thompson saying anything is possible. In reference to Kevin Garnett saying anything is possible was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Clay in general was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Usually in a championship parade in any sport, you see one or two guys get off the bus. It seems like everybody did, and especially Clay knocking people over. Uh, what was your favorite moment of the parade? Uh, leaving. Man, it was hot as hell. <laughs> <laughs> My feet, my feet was hurting. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> nah, it was. Uh, it had to be. It's a, it's a it's it's a toss up between seeing Steph so lit. Like we've never seen Steph that on ten. Like, well, yeah, he was, he's usually guarded. Yeah, yeah, he was talking his talk. He was running around. He was screaming like he was on one. Uh, so that was unique. It wasn't a moment. It was just a vibe you got from Steph. Like, he was turned all the way up. And then, you know, that, that kept going that night. If you follow on social media, like, he was he was toast, right? Like, he was, <laughs> man, he was lit. All. The other one, I'm torn between Clay not only trucking a woman, but barely, like, he lifted her up and kept going. He, he didn't even give her, like, the precursory selfie or hug. He was just like, hey, man, get out of the way. Uh, you good? You good? All right, I'm yeah, right? He's, uh, He was gone. He was like, oh, you all right? She good? Or when he put the trophy down and tried to do Michael Jackson, if I was to put a list of people who mimic Michael Jackson dances, like Clay Thompson's at the bottom, right? <laughs> Clay Thompson's way at the bottom. Like, dude, what are you doing? Stop, bro. Stop. Don't do this. Pull out your Jack Harlow dance. Pull out the, you know, Pull out anybody. Yeah. Don't be don't be don't be messing with Mike, man. Yeah, <laughs> you, no, gotta, I, you gotta I, have some actual rhythm for Mike. Hey, hey, he was Mac Dre, man. He was feeling himself. All right, real quick, thirty seconds. This seemed to be the most satisfying championship, even over the first one. Am I wrong? Because I remember Clay when he came back, all he talked about was I just want to win another championship. I want that and I was like, damn, Clay, be easy, you know? Like wait to come back or whatever. And it just seemed like for everybody it was some form of redemption or I, I you tell me, would you put this because I know the two with with KD aren't up there, but would you put this above the first one? Yeah, I mean they do for sure. They oh, okay. think, I mean yeah. they was down no. They were the first one was like they were on their way up. Remember this? They won a playoffs twenty thirteen. Mm-hmm. They lost in twenty fourteen, and then they won. They were they were they were trending upward. This one they was in the grave, right? They were like people were pouring dirt on the grave. They were done. They were fifteen and fifty, and it was over. Yeah. And they heard two years of people talking trash. So this was. The back then didn't want me. Now I'm hot all on me title. It's the Mike Jones title. <laughs> Marcus Thompson the second. Follow him on Twitter at Thompson Scribe. Also check out his books, uh, Golden KD and Dynasties. He writes for the Athletic. Uh, Marcus, I know you're busy, man. I really appreciate your time and uh, have a good one. All right, man. Treat him well, Sacktown. This is what we do. This is one of the homies. That's what I'm talking about. I'm a Bay boy. I'm I'm Berkeley. He's Oakland. But you know how it is. All right, Marcus.